Okay, this is very short. Let's watch for a while and we will. Today's topic is morphemes. As this topic is extensive, it will be divided into part one and part two. However, don't panic because it is very interesting too. Morphemes are the base of it all. A morpheme is the smallest portion or unit of language with meaning of all language in general, not only English. What does it mean? That you cannot divide a morpheme without losing its meaning. Can you hear the video sound? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Think of it as an atom. The atom is the smallest unit of everything in the physical world that cannot be divided. Or it can? Well, at least not easily. Right? So, coming back to the subject. Morphemes are the smallest meaningful units of language that cannot be divided without losing its meaning. Check the following word. Inconsiderate. This is one word and it has three morphemes. In, consider, and eight. You cannot divide any of these three morphemes without losing their sense. You may say, well, I can divide consider in syllables. Consider. And then into letters. C-O-N-S-I-D-E-R. It is as small as I can go. Maybe. However, notice that you are losing the meaning. Con doesn't mean anything. C doesn't mean anything. Ender doesn't mean anything. Imagine letters. C does not mean literally anything when you want to communicate. Let's go back to the example inconsiderate. You may say, okay, so consider carries a meaning. It is a verb that means thinking carefully about something or regarding something or someone. But what about in and eight? Hmm? No, not that kind of eight. They don't have meaning to me. It is because they have a functional meaning. They may not make sense alone, but they carry a kind of context for a word. And most of the times, this meaning is syntactical. Syntactic what? Syntactical. It has to do with the role or the function that words have in a sentence. We may also call it word class. The word class is like the identification of words. For example, this word is a noun, this word is a verb, an adjective, a pronoun, or a preposition. Those identifications are called word class. In the case of consider, it is a verb, an action, as many would say. If we add eight, we're changing it into an adjective. And if you add in, you may now mean the opposite a person who does not consider others. So morphemes play a meaningful role and a functional role. Morphemes can be classified into two types, free morphemes and bound morphemes. Free morphemes are those that can stand alone in the sentence. They make sense and they carry meaning by their own. They are independent. A free morpheme is a word, but not any word is a free morpheme. Among these we have happy, care, fortune, and quick. Bound morphemes are, in the contrary, morphemes that cannot stand alone by their own. They are dependent. Bound morphemes are not words. They need to be with a free morpheme to make sense. Among these, we have ness, fool, miss, and lee. Isolated, they don't make sense. But look now. Happiness, careful, miss, fortune, and quickly. Hello, sir. If you see it, bound free morphemes are like. Do you have any questions, sir? We want to ask questions. Sir. Yes, yes sir. Sir, uh, I mean, there is a meaning of con, sir. So I didn't get it, actually. Meaning of? Well, the word can't when you break it, sir. So if you can take to the previous, uh, a little back, if you could explain it, sir. Even I wanted to ask. This one? No, back. The word considerate, sir. Okay. Inconsiderate. Yeah. Considerate. 
Yeah, this one, sir. Do you have anything about this? What do you want to say? Repeat. Sir, like if you if you break the word um, consider into con and see and der con definitely has the meaning. Con is a con is like a fake or a thug person or someone who's cheating. I con him into this, so I can con him. Is that what we say, isn't it? Yes. So why does it not make a meaning? We will come to the point. Okay, let's watch this video. Right, I have my own slide. We'll go. Okay, sir. So, okay, ma'am. With a free morphine, to one person is more dependent, and the other one is more independent and free. Okay, that's not a good example. Bound morphemes are classified into two subcategories, inflectional morphemes and derivational morphemes. Inflectional morphemes are those that when you add them to a word, they don't change the meaning and or the word class. For example, the morpheme S. It may seem a simple letter, but no, it is also a morpheme that when you add it to a word, it can change the word from singular to plural. Consider the word car. Adding the morpheme S, you have the word cars. Does it change the meaning? No, it used to be one car. Now we're talking about the same, but more than one car. Does it change its role in the sentence? No, it used to be a noun, and now it keeps being a noun. Inflectional morphemes are only eight, and they are the plural, the ones that end in S, E, S, or I, E, S, for example, walls, buses, and candies. We also have the possessive, apostrophe S, or just apostrophe for the words that are already in plural. For example, Danny's lunch, the pencil size, and cat's hair. The comparative ER, for example, nicer, crazier, and stronger. The superlative EST, for example, the fastest, the funniest, and the clearest. Third person singular in present tense, the ones that end in S, ES, or IES, we have browns, fixes, and cries. Regular past form ED, for example, helped, studied, and loved. Past participle of some irregular verbs, en, for example, taken, broken, and eaten. And present participle, ing, for example, thinking, sleeping, and erasing. It may seem a long list for you to remember, but keep in mind that inflectional morphemes are only these eight that you see here, no more, no less. The rest are derivational. Derivational morphemes, they are the ones that when added to a word, they can change the meaning and or the class of the word. Consider the word legal. When you add to it the morpheme aisle, you're changing the meaning. You want to mean something completely different, illegal. Let's go with the word functional. You're adding the morpheme all to function and you're changing a noun or verb into an adjective. And if you add another morpheme, li, you're turning the adjective functional into functionally, that is an adverb. Here you don't change the meaning as such, but you change the class of the word from noun or verb, as in, your function is to kill them all, or the robot functions well, to an adjective, as in, she's a functional adult, and from adjective to adverb, as in, it works functionally. See the word time. When you add less to it, you're changing the meaning and the word class. Mainly, you're changing this word from a noun to an adjective, and you're changing the meaning. Someone or something that does not have time. Amazing, huh? If you say like these morphemes are like legos with which you can construct words creatively, as long as you follow the rules. Hey, that, that is a good example. Okay, stop. Very good, let's take a break here. Please go to part two of this video. <clears throat> okay.
I think you got basic concept. We can discuss now. Uh, I have some similar and some different content. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Sir. Sir. yes sir. Okay. So first thing, uh, whenever the issue comes, you can you can ask. Uh, we can discuss, right? Uh, first thing is what is morpheme? There was definition you got. Uh, what was the definition? See, uh, this word here, it's very simple, and is a very common also. Uh, let me take the word talks, talker, talk, and talking. And for morphology, right? You just go through the book of uh, George Hill, right? It's a very comprehensive. It's there in our model. You can download. And I've taken all the idea from George Hill. So these are words, and we have started morphology, study of word. So you can see here, one element, basic element is talk, and there are a number of other elements, you can see. Some of you were asking question, that can be meaningful, right? And these are added, uh, in the basic form, talk. These all are, right now, morpheme talk, or you can see talks. There are two morpheme, and it has also, similarly it has also, all of these words are formed using two more. Here meaning doesn't mean that any other meaning you can derive. Meaning means, maybe plural, Maybe you can change. You can change word class. For example, talker, talker, as in is, is a noun. You can say talked. You can say past participle, right? Present participle talking. Talking can be noun also. Talking can be verb also. Adjective, whatever is that. So meaning in that sense doesn't mean that you can break down word in any way and you can bring any meaning. Doesn't mean that, right? So. This is the definition, according to George Hill. What does it say? Minimal unit of meaning for grammatical function. Minimal unit. It means meaningfully, more, it's a morphology, you can see morpheme here. We are under morph, morphology, right? Morphology is a study about word. It's not about sound, right? Any, any other thing. So meaningful grammatical unit, you can further say that. Morpheme is? A meaningful grammatical unit. So meaning here means you can see, you can see grammatical function. Another word here. What does it mean? It function means here. Uh, it indicate tense, plural. For example, you can see here these all. What is the function? From this, you can get guess the function, right? So uh, the affixes we attach on the stem or root, right? I'll talk about what is stem and what is root later, right? Or base form, you can say. This should have some sort of grammatical meaning. Not without that, not devoid of that. So did you get the definition? Minimal grammatical or minimal unit of meaning for grammatical function. That is called morpheme. Or we cannot further divide that word into smaller part. So you see well, how it is meaningful. Meaningful in the sense that you can see this word. So open, it has one meaning. And re has also meaning. Generally, not always, it's not mandatory. Re means again, right? Or sometimes there can be negative marker. And ed means, it has also meaning. Meaning means it indicates past tense. We uh, try to find out this type of meaning, not other type of meaning, right? Grammatical meaning, not other type of meaning. So we cannot uh, again dissect or uh, set the word open into a smaller part. There, there are two things, uh, re and open initially and finally, and in between these two, 
there is open. So we can only divide. So even you can divide, for example, you can make O plus pen. That is not meaningful in the sense that you have to work with the same word, not you need to derive any other thing, right? Same word, same thing. You can make any other word, but that is not meaningful here. Meaningful in the sense that there should be affixes. It talks about uh, affixes, right? Not, not any other things, affixes, right? Don't try to find meaning other way around. So that is not fair in this sense. So uh, is a minimal part, but minimal or minimal meaningful part. You have to divide. For example, as I said, re, re means again, and ed is used for past tense also, participle also, you can say in this sense, right? <clears throat> that is how it is meaningful. Do you have any question here? Again, as you are asking me questions, right? Are you convinced with this explanation? Does anybody have a question? I just try to explain what is morpheme one and how parts of morpheme are meaningful, right? Not everything is meaningful. It doesn't mean that we can yes, put a word into further segment, further meaningful segment. As I said, you can talk about, for example, you can divide open again. You are asking this type of question. O and O means alphabet, one alphabet and pen means another word, right? It is not meaningful. What does O means is not, there is not a, a, such type of word formation in English. So out of this, the base form is here, open. And, sir, um, sir, you, you said that isn't it that in morphins, uh, so we cannot actually divide it, right? But then why are you like, uh, why have you broken down the word we opened here and try and so are you trying to see that these were R E E D? These are these are important grammatically. They should have grammatical meaning, mm -hmm. okay? not any other meaning. You can dissect one word and you can find two. Words. Okay form two or three words or something more like that, right? But what is our concept? Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Grammatically, right? Following rule of grammar. Sir, can we go back? Sir, sir, sir that means here we get three, three morphemes reopened in this word three reopened. Yeah. We, get, we got three morphemes. Yes, following the word grammar. We can only divide, reopen into three parts. Re, re means it is used for again. Either another or another morpheme is ed. Ed has also meaning. Meaning is past uh, marker or participle marker, right? And open is a base form, root form. We cannot further divide that into uh, another word meaningfully. Meaningfully, you can see, you can, there is a grammatical function, is, there is a word, it has meaning, grammatical function, right? What is the function of grammar? If you do not follow grammar, then you can divide, there can be many other ideas, but you have to follow grammar, right? Any other queries? Some of you are asking to go to the first slide, this is one is the first slide, if you have any question about this, we can discuss. Any, any question? I think nobody is asking. Okay, let me go. I think you are clear about definition of morpheme. Morpheme means part support. Yes, sir. Right? Meaningful grammatical part support. And how meaningful I give you example. Grammatically, we have added re. This is word grammar, right? Morphology means word grammar, not any other thing. If we follow morphology, word, word grammar, re means again, and ed means past marker or participle marker, past participle marker. That is the meaning here. So as you saw in that video, right, morpheme, we will discuss about this thing later. A morpheme can be divided into free and bound morpheme. Three can further be divided into 
lexical morpheme and functional morpheme. You can see example, lexical has fixed meaning and functional has grammatical meaning only. For example, and, the, maybe any other prepositional things also can come under functional, right? And article, right? Determiner, all come under functional. All content work come under lexical morpheme and bound morpheme in case of this also you can see right derivational our target point is to reach at uh, inflectional and derivational that's why i'm giving all the extra information these all are extra for you right but i want to reach here uh, derivational and inflectionals right uh, let's slightly uh, discuss about typology and free and bound, as I said earlier, free means they can stand themselves, means they have their own meaning. For example, open to, right, these word, they do not need support of any other, any other thing for its meaning. They are meaningful themselves. And bound means they are a part, simply you can say, re, East, ed, right? They are simply affixes. Can be prefix, can be suffix, right? We discuss about re, for example, earlier, reopen, and we discuss about ed, right? They have grammatical meaning, but in itself or in themselves, they don't have any meaning. They have. They should be attached with other word, and they will have meaning. So free morpheme means generally in English, uh, word class like noun, adjective, verb, right? Uh, they are uh, free morpheme because they have their own meaning, right? And another key term you need to understand here is basic form or stem. There are two words, right? Uh, listen me carefully. Uh, while talking about morpheme, there are two terms you need to remember. Uh, one is stem, and another is root. For example, you can see the word unhappily. Unhappily can be divided into C. Two meaningful part. One is on, next one is happily. And happily, this is this affix on. You can see on here. This, there is no question. This is prefix. You can you can see here is written affix. There is also affix. And next one is stem. So you can see what is stem. Stem can be further divided, but uh, root cannot be. Listen me again. Stem, this happily is stem, base form. You can say base form. Or happy plus you can divide happily into happy and ly. So you cannot divide happy into further segment, meaningful grammatical segment. So it can be called stem also, but mainly if you cannot further divide the base form, that is called root. So there is one expression you can see the second stem happily is a root as it cannot be further divided into morpheme do you have any question did you get the concept of stem and root sir yes can we say that root is the free morpheme yeah root is free morpheme stem is also free morpheme <coughs> meaning what I mean to say that uh, there are three terms, right? Let me write here. Uh, base form, for example, base form. And next one is stem, right? And next one is roots or root, let's say. Uh, these, these all have their own meaning. There is no question, right? But uh, root is the fundamental or basic form 
that cannot be further divided, right? But stem can be divided. But we can use stem and root interchangeably also. For example, you can see here, happily is, happy is stem also, root also. <clears throat> so all roots are stems, but all stems are not root in this sense. Root is fundamental form, but any other form can be called as stem, except. So, so this is from the inflectional point of view that you're talking about the word classes that you're explaining to us, like from the morphemes point of view, when you're saying morphemes and uh, which are bound in nature, but then since you divided them into derivational and inflectional, so this uh, particular part that you're showing us is the deriva is the inflectional, right, sir? This one is, yes, inflectional. Okay. I'm talking about inflectional one. <clears throat> yeah. Is it is only for your common understanding. Maybe it, it can be confusing thing for you later. That's why I talk about what is root, what is stem, and what is base form, etc. Right? Root is that form of word which cannot be further divided. But stem can be divided. Are you clear? We can uh, Excuse me, sir. This is not inflectional because in inflectional morpheme, we don't have ly. Sorry? This is not inflection morpheme, no, sir, because in inflection morpheme, we don't have ly. You said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. class changing. Yes, in, in case of class changing, that is in the VDI. class changes. I, I, I simply mean that. Yeah, you, your correction is right. Yes. So basically, then what does this This one is derivational. Yes, you, you add ly, it's derivational. Yes, you are right, madam. Yes, there was there was mistake. It's derivational, right? Yeah, derivational, this one is. Okay. So if it is not in, oh, it is morpheme, but it is not inflectional morpheme, sir. Yeah. Is that? It can be inflectional. It doesn't mean that. I, I am, I am saying that this stem root concept are can be inflectional also, derivational also. For example, you can talk about inflectional. For example, let me write this one. Uh, uh, it. You can talk in this way also, but. This is this can be it it can be right for other word formation if it is possible it can be that also but I simply mean that we are not talking about inflectional derivation right now we are simply talking about it's a derivation if you talk about this right but we are not talking about that we are simply talking about the concept what is root and what is stem are you clear about that or not I'm going to inflection and derivation are you clear this yes. what is stem. When we add ly, this is derivational. It's okay, but bring everything, every concept in the same idea, right? This can be confusing. So I, I made mistake there. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Are you saying anything? Uh, so even unhappily would be even unhappy, even unhappy would be derivational, no, sir. Because there is a prefix added no, no, to please it. Please don't bring a derivational and in, uh, inflectional here. It's, it's not a matter of derivation and inflection. There is a separate class for that. I'm simply saying that are, are you clear about stem and root or not? Derivation simply yeah, yeah, has two, uh, two criteria and inflection has only one criteria. As I said, is it class changing or not? Simply remember this. I will talk about this later. I'm asking only are you clear about stem and root or not? Do you know what is stem and what is root or not? That is my question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Let, let, let's forget about inflection derivation because we have separate separate section for that. We are coming to the point. Uh, it can create confusion. Otherwise. So. Yes, please. Um, I just, so root, can root. we go back to the previous slide? Yeah. Uh, basically, over here when you say all the, sorry. So the previous, no, no, the root and stem, sir. Yes, here. Okay, so all the roots are stems, but all the stems are not roots. Can you give us another example to make this a bit more clear here for me? Like, you know, other than unhappily. Can you tell me any other? Because in this un becomes, uh, un becomes a suffix, and if we say happily, then happily becomes an affix after the word happy. So how can we say stem and root uh, mean the same thing, isn't it, sir? That's what I'm trying to ask. Isn't the stem and Talk root the same this. thing? You know this one, reopened, right? Yeah, yes. 
Okay, so E, R, D, and E, D is uh, we can e, write this into E plus open E plus E open plus E D open open plus E D N N E D open open plus E D so no no open would be Chitna Chitna ma'am open open would be uh, open would be the stem word yes. Okay. Yeah, if you know if you have idea, try to convert. 